Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. We have Shauna Lynn Simon here today, and she is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our channel, so check it out because she has a couple of really great episodes you're going to hear, and she also has her own podcast that will soon be launching, and she'll have all the information in the description box, so you could go check out her podcast, which will be listed in the description box. So today I'm really excited because we're going to talk about females guidance to resilience and this is a really important topic and it's something that captures a lot of women's attention but how do we go about it and right now Shauna Lynn is going to tell you how to go about it the right way and how to make the most out of your life so take it away Thank babe you, Stacy amazing uh and thanks for having me back by the way um but yeah I mean I think you know I think everyone wants their comeback story, right? Everyone yeah. wants to be able to say, I survived. Mm -hmm. And I think especially with entrepreneurship, it yeah. is like a survival's guide to entrepreneurship. Like it's how do we make sure that we're surviving this? And I want everyone to thrive at it, of course. Um, yeah. And I'd love to say that, you know, I just... I woke up one day as this brilliant entrepreneur and I knew all the tips and I did everything perfectly from the beginning. No, that's not how it happens. In fact, it's complete opposite. And right. I've told my story on previous episodes, so I won't get into it, but uh, I went through my own period of burnout and recovery and recovery takes a while. So what I'm hoping is that we can just build resilience into our everyday practice. Yeah. So it's not something that you have to have your massive comeback story, but instead you're practicing it on a daily basis. Right. So I think that one of the biggest things that comes up when we're talking about that resilience is overcoming the stress part of it. It's just, yeah. it's, it's stress. And we talked a little bit about this before we hit record, mm -hmm. uh, women, especially yeah, uh, our stress response mm -hmm. results in elevated cortisol levels. Yeah. And so this manifests in your body, not just as a, my mind won't start racing. I'm not sleeping very well. This is going to affect you physiologically as well. You right. will gain weight. You can end up having issues with kidneys, with your heart. Like they have linked so many other ailments to initially being caused by, by stress, by the right. it's a stress response essentially. And so what, what we need to do in order to practice resilience is to practice stress management. Yes. And I think the challenge with this is that stress is something that we think we'll manage when we come across it, but then we don't have any of the tools in our toolbox to do it because we're not necessarily practicing it on a daily basis. Right. So I want to kind of change that conversation. I The key to stress management is to develop the tools that you need to manage your stress before you're actually stressed. So every day, practicing things. Yeah. So for example, one of the things that we talked about before we hit record, uh, if you don't mind me sharing, was that yeah. you got your nails done recently because you're like, I'm going to take five for me. Yeah. Right. And good for you for doing that. That is practicing stress management, telling yourself, I just need to take a break for a moment. I baked muffins the other day because I was like, I'm stressed today. I'm feeling a little <laughs> bit of overwhelm. And, and I'll go through some more specific tips as to like what, what to do when you're actually stressed. Uh, but right. the point is though that like, I don't just bake muffins when I'm stressed. I, I know that baking is something that makes me feel calm. Right. So it's something that I do regularly to mm -hmm. make me happy. So what makes you happy? Those things that make mm -hmm. you happy are also going to help you when it comes to managing your stress, which is, which is huge, of course. So that's kind of, yeah, the start of the conversation, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so important. You know, I, I think people don't take the time out to get, do something that they really enjoy and they're go, doing, 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 doing. And that's mm -hmm. where they fall into that hole. And that's where they start to really, their levels of stress start to really, you know, get Absolutely. high in their cortisol level. And I knew right away, you know, I had such a normal cortisol level for so long. And then all of a sudden, for I don't even know why it just rose. And then trying to get it down was, it's very, very difficult, you know, and I could see the difference. I could see the difference uh, mm -hmm. of, and I know that my cortisol level is high because you could just feel it. If you're tuned with your body, you can feel the differences in your body when you have a low cortisol level compared to when you have a high cortisol level. Absolutely. And it is something, yeah, like you, you'll feel the difference. You'll know the difference, but you'll also experience the difference. Your body yeah. will hang on to weight. For example, if you're finding that you're struggling to lose weight, 
there's a good chance that you've got some high cortisol levels that are impacting that. And even people who say like, well, I go for walks every day or I, I run every day. We were, right. this is something that, uh, you know, I'm a runner. I love to run. Oh my gosh. Runner's high is a very legitimate thing. And I will tell you, if you don't love running, you're probably never going to run loving, but if or love running, but if you love running, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I don't ever want to give up running, but I also know that the, that cardio is impacting my cortisol levels because essentially your body doesn't know the difference between the stress response that cortisol causes when you're stressed out versus yeah. I'm running away from a bear versus I'm just running on a treadmill. Yeah. Like it doesn't know the difference. So we're, we're, we're biological miracles basically. And we are pre-programmed to react in certain ways and our body's kind of in tune like oh like so we're sending these signals to our brain and to the rest of our body saying like hey i'm stressed out and that's what going for a run does yeah. so going back to what i was saying where people are like i walk every day or i walk everywhere well what pace are you walking at if right. you're walking in what i call mission mode where you're walking at that like i've got a destination to get to i'm going to walk as fast as i can to get there yeah again, you're elevating your cortisol levels and so you're not taking the relaxation from that walk right one of the greatest things that I learned how to do was go for a slow, leisurely walk. I never thought I'd be that person. Right. It is invigorating. A very slow 15 minute walk does more for me than a 30 minute power walk does. Yeah. And I, you see better physical results from it as well, which is, which is really important. So, yeah. You know, you're not the first person that said that there are, are a lot of people that said that they actually got better better toned they got in their they got their body intact by doing less vigorous activities when they started to do more relaxing exercises like you said a nice relaxing walk i knew someone that she looked so good and her her body got so toned and i'm like what are you doing and she's like there's a lake by my house and i just walk around it three times a day and that was her that was her exercise that was what she was doing when here's what it's doing though it's not just i think where we constantly associate our fitness level and our physical uh, body shape and everything else with the exercises that we're doing in terms of like, well, I need to do, you know, I need to tone this area and I need to drop 20 pounds and I, you know, whatever it is that we're thinking about. And we're yeah. not thinking about how our, the state of our mind impacts all of that and how it relates to that. And so her walking around the lake a few times a day, it's not just about the physical steps she's taking that, yes, that contributes to her overall right. health and that's activating the muscles and energizing the body, but it's also putting her mind at rest and at yeah. ease. And that settled mind allows your body to do what it needs to do in right. order to burn some, some calories as needed, not store fat. It doesn't need to store. And so that's a huge thing. And this is why I say that stress management is something that should be a daily habit and daily routine. So like right. when I'm stressed out, I'm going to go for a walk when I'm not mm -hmm. stressed out though, I'm going to go for that walk, yeah. building that into your routine, right? you will be amazed. Even if you don't think you're stressed out right now, go for a walk, start going for a walk, do that once a day. Even if you don't get it quite every day, let's say you get every other day, you get out for that walk, do that for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You will notice your, both your mental and your physical health will thank right. you for it. There will right. be an impact on it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I definitely like walks, uh, yoga, stretching, all those light movements, those are going to benefit you. I don't want to say more than, other exercises. Cause again, it depends on what your fitness goals are, what your body type is, where you're at, where your starting point is. Like, there's a lot that goes into this, but yeah. when it comes to that, the mental health aspect of stress management, that light movement, those walks, yoga, that kind of thing is going to be huge for it. Yeah. I've actually got, um, and I know this is the other thing I'm going to say that I know a lot of people are going to say like, but I'm too darn busy to do this. You were talking about like, just take that time and go for yourself. And there's probably tons of people who are listening to this and saying, there's no way I'm going to find that time in the day. If you go to my website about shaunalyn.com forward slash time, I have my top five tips to help you to gain an extra 10 hours every week. And I promise you they wow. work. We'll talk about a little bit of, of it today, but um, I just want to start off with saying that because I don't want people to start tuning us out and saying like, I don't have time for these things. Yes, yeah. you do. Trust me, you do. You can find it. I can help you find that time. Uh, but yeah, so I think when it comes to... Um, 
in order to be able to manage the everyday demands of entrepreneurship, we need to understand what stress is and how to attack it. So right. uh, I recommend evoking the five senses. So the way to do this is in that moment that you're stressed, mm -hmm. or if you're not stressed as well, again, practice this every day, right. what are some things that make you feel relaxed? Think about what what is it, something for touch, uh, taking a bath, maybe that warm water. Maybe it's yeah. about snuggling up with a pet or wrapping yourself in a cozy blanket. Right. Um, your sense of smell, lighting a candle, breathing in some essential oils, going for a walk outside, breathing in that fresh air. For taste, um, maybe it's a warm cup of tea. I love my afternoon tea. Uh, that cup of tea can also evoke the senses, sense of smell, of course, as well. Right. Um, maybe it's a comfort food that you have for taste that, you know, just a little, little sweet something in the afternoon. Right. Um, sight, focusing on something that takes your mind away from, like, if you're staring at an email that has just mm -hmm. caused you stress, yeah. look away from the email. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Go focus on something else, the clouds, read a book, like watch a show, whatever, but let your, let your sight drift away from it because staring at it is not going to make it yes. any less stressful. Uh, and then sound, you know, things like music, calming sounds like the ocean or rain, whether they're natural or on a recording or whatever. Right. Um, verbal affirmations, even, you know, playing an instrument, playing an instrument, if you actually play yourself also evokes the touch uh, as well, you know, so like there's just how can you play to your senses? Um, when I feel stressed, so I actually had bit of a moment last week I had, uh, I, and it was, a, and of course I acknowledged I, talking to my, my team. I'm like, I'm feeling overwhelmed. They're like, don't you literally teach people how to not do this? I'm like, I know that's why I'm acknowledging <laughs> this. Like, cause I'm not immune to it. Like yeah. just because I have all these things in place doesn't mean that I don't have my moments. Exactly. And so the first thing I did was acknowledge it. You got to name it. Yeah. You can identify, I'm feeling stressed right now. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Say it out loud. Yes. That is one of the first steps to being able to combat it. Mm -hmm. And then the next part is take a look at what can you control and what can't you control. Right. And the parts that you can control. Okay. Let's start putting some action steps to that. Right. right? That's going to make us feel like we're doing something. The part you can't control. That's where these five senses are going to come in. Yes. Because you cannot force control of something you just can't control. Exactly. And whether that's weather circumstances, like your flight got canceled and it's stressing you out because you have to be somewhere at 9 a.m. the next morning. And well, okay, you can't control that your flight was canceled. So stop talking about it. Stop exactly. worrying about it. Exactly, yeah. Now, if you really need to be somewhere by 9 a.m. the next morning, is there another way you can get there? Like start thinking about solutions of what you can control. Yeah. And at some point, sometimes, yeah, you just kind of got to let things go. Um, mm -hmm. I find journaling and meditation really, yeah. really helpful for it those is. things I can't control. <laughs> yeah. So you you journal, don't you? Yeah, I journal. I find it very helpful. I've also found it where I've had rest, repressed emotions and I didn't even realize it. And I just started to get all these thoughts in my head and I just started to just write them down. And, and you know, it was about a topic that I was passionate about and I was thinking about it. And then all of a sudden, all these words started to come in my head. So obviously my subconscious, it was affecting me more than mm -hmm. I thought it was. And that's the thing that people don't realize is that sometimes things are affecting us more than we really think. It's in our subconscious. And that's why sometimes we get these weird dreams at night. It's because right. it's still going on in your brain. And like I was saying, I, I started writing it down. And then all of a sudden I started breaking out in tears. And I said, wow, I'm still not over this. These things are still affecting me. And it didn't, if it wasn't for that journaling, I would not have gotten to that point to realize that I'm still unsettled about these issues in my life. I need to work on them. I love that you brought that up because you also bring up a really important point. I think that we sometimes set these unrealistic expectations of ourselves that everyone says time heals all things. Yeah. So you expect after a certain amount of time has passed that you should just be over things. Yeah. It's not that simple. No. You know, so if you're not over it, keep processing it. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's things that I've had some really difficult things that I've, I've had to work through over the last couple of years and I've come a long way on them. And 
I would think, I would like to say that I, I have a great deal of peace surrounding them. Yeah. But every once in a while, some little triggers come up that just remind me like, oh yeah, yeah you still got some things lingering there, Yeah, you know, and it's important to acknowledge them and address them. Yeah. And then again, going back to what can I control and what can't I control right. and learning to release the things that I can't. And that's, yeah, journaling is a great way. Maybe that means having a conversation with someone through journaling when you can't actually have a conversation with someone productively, 100%. Um, you know, or maybe they're just not even here and present anymore to be able to have that conversation with. Those are hard things to deal with. And I think that I'm sure there's probably people listening to this episode saying, but you don't understand what I've had to deal with. There yeah. are some serious hardships and there are things that I've watched people just come through on the other side of that. I know how big that storm was. Yeah. And I know that even when you're on the other side of it, it doesn't mean you forgot the pain or that the pain didn't exist. Mm -hmm. It just means that you found a way to move forward. Yeah. And it's one step at a time, you know, don't, don't try to solve all the world's problems at once, but break things down. So when you're facing something that's just absolutely massive, mm -hmm. break it down into what can I do right now? Yeah. And then what's the next step and what's the next step? I mean, grief is a great, um, you know, that's a great example of things that we have to overcome, but it's not always, I think we always think of grief as kind of like the big obstacle that we're challenged with, but there's so many things in day-to-day -day life and especially in entrepreneurship. Yeah. I think as women, especially there are, we will often second guess ourselves of a conversation. Maybe someone made us feel uncomfortable yeah. And we didn't address it the way that we thought that we should have. Right. Or we're questioning, did I make a bigger deal out of that than I needed to? Yeah. Or should I have been more understanding and accommodating? And those can cause us stress. All those little inner conversations we're having with ourselves, second guessing things can yeah. cause us stress. So get them out in journaling or turn to your support group. Who right. do you have that you can talk to about this? Whether it's a business coach, accountability partner, a friend, a parent, a, a partner, whoever it is that, that you've got in your life, but get those things out of your head as much as you can, because yeah. the, keeping them in your head is not a, is not a healthy place for them by any means. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Totally. I think you really have to get them out of your head, you know, and, mm -hmm. and find a, a healthy solution for that. And it's, you know, and I love that you mentioned the quote where you were talking about, you know, how, people, we, we focus on things and we don't let go, you know, like we're powerless over certain situations. Like when you mentioned, well, I missed the flight and then you constantly think, oh, I'm going to be late to this and da, 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 but you're powerless. So now think of a solution, you know, where people get stuck, they get stuck on, I missed the flight, I missed the flight. And mm -hmm. then they get their cells worked up and they can't let go. And I think that's what a lot of things in life, people, in when, when they're powerless in a situation, they have no control. One, they don't want to admit that they don't have control. And two, it's very, they, they get fixated on it. And, and I have to be, you know, I'm a victim of it too. Like I get fixated on things that, that draws my stress levels up and I'm powerless over the situation, but yet sometimes we get fixated because I think in our head, we're trying to figure things out that we, first of all, they're, they're, they're meaningless. And second of all, it's not going to do us any good, but for some reason, our brain goes on it. It's like, you know, how could I have fixed this? How, how do I make this better? You know, and we don't, but we don't move on. We're like stuck in that first block. And I think the challenge is that we can find it easier to live in the future and the past than much easier than we can live in the present. Yeah. And the present is really where we need to be most of the time. Yes. So the past is the things that have already happened. We can't change them, of course. Yes. Um, but in reference to the example that I used of missing your flight. So you had envisioned a, a certain sequence of events that were going to take place. And whether you did it consciously or subconsciously, you start thinking about what that was all going to look like. And so that's where your brain kind of gets into this stuck loop of like, but it was supposed to do this, but it was supposed to do this. And I had this vision and you, you have to kind of get it unstuck and yeah. identify, okay, that's not happening anymore. Right. So let's, how do we move forward? I think, again, this goes back to though, that, you know, we've said this probably like six times now, but this is why practicing this on a daily basis yeah. is important. So when the small stuff happens, 
being able to check yourself and saying like, okay, like let's, here's a small thing. Someone cut you off as you were driving Yeah, and it frustrated you and you're still dwelling on it 10 minutes later. Check yeah. yourself on that one and yeah. remind yourself like, so first of all, what is the point of hanging on to that? Do you yeah. think that person has any clue that they've ruined your day? Right. Don't let it ruin your day. So check yourself. And I, and don't get me wrong. It's not to say that I don't get frustrated. Like it's all the things that I'm saying, there's no judgment with any of this, but the point is though that, you know, if you're checking in with yourself on those small things and saying like, Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. This has already happened. It's not happening in this moment. Why am I hanging on to this? There's no reason to, I can get all upset and say that everyone's a terrible driver today, or I can simply concentrate on getting where I need to get to yeah. and showing up in the best state that I possibly can. Right. And if you can do that in those small situations, imagine how that's going to come in handy when it's a bigger situation. Exactly. So true. every day, every day we're experiencing small little stressors yes. and, and some days are bigger than others. Right. I will also say, if you're having a day where it feels like the entire world is working against you somehow, you're probably stressed. It's yeah. probably not the world. It's just your reaction. Yeah. Is that you just can't process anything else. So it has to be out of all out of your control. Cause if it's all in your control, you feel like you've lost that control somehow. So exactly. Yeah. And yeah. another thing that you pointed out that I thought was great was, and I hear this from a lot of my clients is that I don't have the time. I don't have the time, but like, you know, you mentioned that you have it on your website that they could look up and learn how to make the time because mm -hmm. you always have the time. You yes. always, you know, it's not, I can't, you can, it's not, I shouldn't, you should, you know, it's like, you could, you could reverse things in anything in life. It's just re reestablishing how you're going to do it. And then, you know, and, and there's all different ways to do it, but if you do have the time, you can reconstruct your, your day and reconstruct Absolutely. how you do things and make the time for yourself. Because at the end of the day, what's more important, you, your health or life around you, the materialistic things, mm -hmm. your, your job position, or just other things that, you know, it's really your health and your happiness that should come first in life. Absolutely. And Again, download the PDF about shaunalyn.com forward slash time. Uh, but I talk about, first of all, the productivity paradox. And part of the reason why so many people are feeling so overwhelmed, and again, I'm speaking about female entrepreneurs, especially here, mm -hmm. is that they get stuck in what I call the productivity paradox. And yeah. this is that state of where you're busy, 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 busy. <laughs> And nothing's getting done Yeah, because you're not managing your task list. You're not really prioritizing things the way that you should. Right. So you've got to get some clarity on some things. Yeah. And I go into this more in the, in the guide that I've got. So I'm not going to go too far into it here, but the point is though, that if you're constantly feeling busy and not actually getting things done, that's going to continue to contribute to your stress and your overwhelm. So yes. in order to combat all of that, you do need to get a handle on that to-do list and being a bit more objective about it. And before you tell me, but my situation is different. Listen, I get it. I am a caregiver for my disabled father. I'm running four businesses over here, taking care of like half a dozen cats <laughs> at any given time. And then yeah. there's all, and that's not even including the things that happen out of the blue. So, right. you know, a few weeks back, actually, I guess it was a couple months ago now when my car was vandalized unexpectedly. And all of a sudden now I need to dedicate 10, 12 hours to dealing with insurance and police and auto body shops and everything else. Mm -hmm. for this massive claim that I now need to claim. Like I hadn't planned for that. Yeah. That week was one of my most productive weeks because mm -hmm. I had to objectively look at my to-do list and identify what absolutely has to get done. Wow. And it's amazing how easy it is to trash some of those tasks <laughs> when you're a bit more objective about it, when you start running, really run out of time. Because listen, if I told you that you've got your whole day planned and I told you now you only have two hours to get things done, you will get things done in that right. two hours. It'll mm -hmm. be the most productive two hours you've ever had. Yes. We do not need 12 hours in a day to get things done. Right. Parkinson's, Parkinson's law. We will expand time to meet like whatever we say the amount of time is that we need. Yeah. We will expand the task to meet that, that amount of time. So if we say that we're going to have a two hour meeting, we're going to have a two hour meeting. But right. if I say we're going to condense that meeting to 15 minutes, we're going to get it done in 15 minutes, <laughs> right? It's so, so true. 
Yeah, there's a there's a lot to it. Uh, there's a, definitely a lot that needs to uh, come with you know ensuring that you are keeping on top of that to do list. But uh, I know we talked about this a little bit on the last episode as well. But ladies, say no sometimes too. Just yeah. say no. Stop saying yes to everything. Yes. See, I just yeah. said it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> say yes to no. Say yes yeah. to no. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to say no. You're not a bad person. And, you know, it's funny because I, I had a conversation with somebody else too. So many people feel bad if they say no, you know, and I know we talked about this in our last conversation, but you're not a bad person if you say no, and you have to no. get that through your head, you know, and that person brought up a, a, a really good point. The person who was on the other podcast I was talking to, she said that most CEOs, successful CEOs and business people who do really well say no most of the time. There's very yes. few times they say the word yes. Most of the time, no comes out of their mouth. And if you're going to say yes, make yes on your terms. Exactly. Right? So what is it that, uh, like, I'm a big fan of, if people ask me for a meeting, I don't, I try not to take on any more meetings than necessary. So right. instead I'll send them an audio note. I'll say, hey, listen, I, I understand you want a meeting. Uh, let me know what you want to discuss. Let's do it this way. Let's see how much we can get accomplished. And this way it's not, I'm not having to put something else on my calendar. Right. So it's less stressful. It's more on my terms. It's amazing what we can get done in that time. And I do I feel bad saying no to a meeting? Sure I do. But I'm also looking at my calendar that is full of meetings. Yeah. I, as you said, I've got my own podcast as well. I've got one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. I've got my group coaching clients. Right. Never mind my staff. Yeah. I am in so many meetings in a day. But you know what I really want to do sometimes is just get some stuff done. And if yeah. I have meetings all day, I can't get things done. So exactly, you know, I've, I've learned how to say yes while still saying no. So you're just saying yes on your terms. Right. You know, it's so okay. taking a look at what they, what they're asking and saying like, can I do this in a different way than what they've asked me to do? And yeah. I like that you mentioned that to stay in control, because I think a lot of times we tend to let other people take control of the conversation. And I feel, I see that in a lot of female um, uh, clients and entrepreneurs that they sometimes, you know, they don't stand to their ground as strong as they should. And because they have the ability to, and they let the other person take control of the conversation. Therefore, they don't get what they want accomplished because they let the other person take control. And it's really exactly. having to stand that ground, I think. What do you think? But now you've got this resentment that this thing, this person, this task, this whatever it was, took your time away and now you're resenting that you didn't get certain things done. And again, right. that's going to contribute to your stress levels. Yeah. And it's not fair to that person. They don't know when they asked you to do whatever it was that they asked you to do. They didn't, they didn't know that that was going to be impacting you the way that it did. So yes. you also got to be mindful of that as well of like a lot of times we're kind of self-imposing deadlines and responsibilities that we could have been saying no to. Right. Exactly. And it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's not easy. I'm not saying that's easy, but, um, you know, it, if you practice stress management, if you check yourself often, check in with your friends and such as well, you right. know, um, all of that will, will help you to be able to be in a better mindset, to be able to say no, when it yes. doesn't suit you. Um, one of the other things I would say too, is I meant to mention this earlier, but, um, when it comes to stress management, I have found the people you surround yourself with are going to be huge on this. Yeah. And so if you give them what you need, you will get it in return. Mm -hmm. So I suggest living with gratitude. And so when, when people do something that you appreciate big or small, make sure they know that they, that you appreciate it and why you appreciate it. And what that does is that helps to build a habit of reciprocating that gratitude as well. Right. So when you're feeling really down, they might just come to you and say, you know what? I really appreciate what you do. And yeah. I know it wasn't easy for you. And, you know, you get that, that paid back to you. And sometimes that's all you need to just lift you out of whatever funk you're in that day. Yeah. You know, having those people around you supporting you. And other times it might even just be a matter of you going to them and saying, you know what? I'm not feeling my best today. I, I could really use a little bit of support. And right. People want to be genuinely helpful. So, um, you know, really really hone in on the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Um, I, I lost a friend, a very dear friend of mine at the end of 2022 to mental illness. Mm. And I learned some great lessons from both his life and death. But, um, a couple of things that I learned that I'd love to share if you, if, if you don't mind, uh, oh, that I think are really great lessons for every day. Um, 
as I shared this on my social media, I'm actually going to be reading this because I shared this on his, on my social media shortly after his passing. Uh, this kind of sums up what I was just talking about. So I said, if you love someone, tell them. There's no better time to tell them than right now. Mm-hmm. Make time for those who matter. Life really is too damn short. Yeah. Leave with kindness and let go of anger and resentment. Again, life is too short. Yes. And then we only get one life to live. Live yours authentically. If the people around you don't accept you for who you are, find new people. Right. That's and perfect. I think that that really sums up, you know, if you want to get through each day, if you want to be resilient, if you want to be able to move forward, practice all of that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. That really sums it up. You know, I, I think, I think gratitude is so important and it, it is, you know, share it in the present moment while you have those people around you. Cause I think we take for granted. We, we think, okay, I'm going to be here till my eighties. I'm going to be here forever. And you don't know what the next day may bring. You don't know what's ahead and yeah. what lies in the future. So, you know, really, you know, you should share your gratitude, share your appreciation, share your love, because even though the, the, when they, when they cross over, they'll always know how much you love and care for them. It For the other person, we always go through the, as humans, the should have, could have, would have, you know, and everything else. And and we have regrets, you know, when we even shouldn't have regrets, you know, but exactly. we beat ourselves over the head. And it's really, you know, taking those moments that you have with these people that we love and care for and and doing our best, you know, to share it. Because sometimes, you know, you don't realize how short life can be. Absolutely. And that's just it. And so when it comes to running your business, it can take over our entire lives. And we just keep thinking, if I just get through this one thing, if I just, you know, get through the next couple of months, the next year, the next, whatever, I'll have more time for my family. I'll have more time for my friends. I'll do the things that I said I was going to do, like traveling and whatnot. Yeah. But you really only have right now. Right. And so choose how you're going to spend that time. It doesn't mean, don't get me wrong. I work late hours sometimes, especially when I've got a special project going on. Yeah. We all do it but make sure that you're not sacrificing those things that really matter to you. Yeah. You to achieve your success, success can come without that overwhelm, without the stress and without the burnout, without having to feel like you're killing yourself. Uh, You know, I'm I'm tired of the hustle culture. There's, there's a lot more balance out there to be, to be given. So, yeah. So true. (laughs) So true. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to wrap it up and and take give and emphasize on it, a couple of really strong points, what would you say those those points that you want to emphasize on that you really want to get across to people today? Yeah, I think the first thing is, I mean, I did say it several times, but make stress management a habit. Uh, make it something that uh, allows you to be at peace every day and so that you can find that peace when you really need to call on it. Um, and then- just check in with yourself to identify what really matters. Right. Uh, you know, and I think that's going to be the key to being able to manage the time and the productivity, being able to manage your, your stress, being able to, uh, you know, identify what items you can control and what you can, all those things, you know, like when you know what, what really matters to you, it's a lot easier to yeah. find the path forward. hundred yeah. percent for sure. Yeah. And the services you have, like what services do you have that pertain to stress management that you could help others with? I I think my group coaching program is definitely, uh, it's really been centered around uh, stress management. Of course, I incorporate it into my one-on-one coaching as well, but uh, I've got this great program called the Real Women, Real Business Mastery Program. It's a 12-month mm-hmm. program that helps female entrepreneurs to just take back the control of their business in a way that is healthy, in a way that allows them to balance their, all the things in their life that they need to balance uh, with the clarity that they need to be able to do it. So it's easier to be able to make the strategic decisions and not feel like you're just running in circles. So it gets you off that hamster wheel, essentially. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic program. Go to real, real women, real business.com to check it out. Uh, but that's definitely, you know, if you're looking to, if you want to make this time next year, a uh, complete turnaround from where you are right now, both, you know, in financial stability, mental stability, physical health, all the things, this program is what's going to get you there. It incorporates all of that. It's a, it's a really well-balanced program. I'm really proud of it. That sounds amazing. And can you tell everybody your website once again, so they make sure they of remember course. it? Of course. Yeah. So go to aboutshawnalyn.com forward slash the advisor to get 
all sorts of great little tidbits that we talked about today uh, and about shaunalyn.com forward slash time to get that PDF from me. So yeah, that's where you can find all the details you need. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Shauna Lynn, for coming on the show. This has been amazing. Every time you come on, I'm so excited before you come <laughs> on the show because you have such great advice and great input. Uh, you're just, your insights are amazing. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Stacey. I, I still love being here. I feel like the messages you are sharing to the audience is absolutely incredible. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You have a great day. Thanks. You as well.